In this video, we discuss how to implement authentication and authorization with Auth0. And Joey Davila, Senior Developer Advocate at Auth0, shows us how to get started. Welcome to How to Business, I'm Frederick Weiss. Today we are talking with Senior Developer Advocate at Auth0, Joey Devilla. Joey, welcome to the show. Hey, glad to be here, Frederick. Super happy to have you. Joey, before we jump into our subject, I'd love if you could tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words. Okay, really simply, I am a programmer who, by virtue of an accident with an accordion, ended up in developer relations. I was at Linux World Expo 2000, and I brought my accordion with me and leapt in front of some CNN cameras with it and parlayed that into an interview. And when I got back home to my then home office in Toronto, they basically said, you're a developer relations guy now. And I've actually been bouncing between building applications and doing de developer relations ever since. I've worked at places like Microsoft and Shopify, and now I work at Auth0. Thank you for that context. I, I want to ask you about the accordion thing in just a moment, but first let's go ahead and get to our main topic, how to implement authentication and authorization with Auth0. Joey? Oh, okay. I guess the first thing we should do is actually define authentication and authorization. And I'm going to go really simple. Authentication basically answers the question, who am I? When a user signs on to your system, you want to know who they are. And then there is authorization. Related, but not exactly the same thing. Authorization answers the question, what am I allowed to do? And that's a very different thing entirely. And typically, especially these days, you want to know both things. We have, we've got online and distributed systems everywhere. And with the pandemic, it's as if somebody has actually pressed the fast forward or skip chapter button, because all of a sudden we need to be online way more often and for many more things, especially since a lot of things are being done remotely. A lot of things are being done online. And once you do that, there's no putting the genie back in the bottle or the toothpaste back in the tube. People are now insisting, yeah, you know what? I want to be able to work or do other things that once required me to be physically present there. I want to be able to do it from wherever I am, whether that's home or some other place. And that's what authentication and authorization allow you to do. You can build it yourself, but I don't recommend it. It's one of those things where it's better to it's actually better to go with a third-party solution. And it happens for a lot of things as well in software development. I don't recommend you come up with your own encryption. You're probably better off not inventing your, uh, not coming up with your own data unless you are a programming language specialist. Yeah, you probably don't want to invent your own programming language. You probably want to pick one of the thousands, if not tens of thousands out there that works best for you and whatever project you happen to be working on. It makes sense. I believe this is an obvious question, Joey, but what are the unique business challenges behind authentication and authorization? The big thing, of course, is uh, the fact that authorization and authentication become projects under themselves. You think, okay, you know what? Logging in and handling log user login and determining what each user is allowed to do or what privileges they have within your system, it seems like a straightforward topic until you start diving into it and looking at the individual parts, including things like handling signup, uniquely identifying somebody by their email address, even figuring out what is a legitimate email address format or not is a tricky thing. Go on Stack Overflow sometime and look for the regular expressions that people have tried to come up with to determine whether an email address is of a legitimate format or not. Never mind the fact whether or not that the email address actually exists or not. And then there's the issue of passwords. What handling all the use cases for what's an acceptable password, prompting the user when they use a password that's a little too simple or one that they've used before. Also dealing with logins from suspicious IPs that are known to be uh, the IPs used by 
bad parties on the internet. It just gets crazier. And suddenly the, the quote, quote, simple matter of logging in users explodes into its own software project. And you're being pulled away from what your software actually does, the problem you were writing your software to solve in the first place. Basically, my philosophy is 99 times out of 100 or even 9,999 times out of 10,000, you don't want to go to the woods to chop down a tree just to make a door. You go to the hardware store or a specialty door provider and you buy the door. In most cases, well there is a standard door out there that will work for you just fine. So you can concentrate on the actual problem you're trying to solve, which is building your house in the first place. Uh, login is just the door into your system. In most cases, authorization and authentication service like Auth0 will do the job just fine. And it is customizable for all sorts of applications anyway. Love it. Maybe you could uh, provide us an example here of that door we could purchase at the store. I know you have a bit of code to provide to show us an example of how easy this actually is and to get going. This is Android Studio because I am on the Auth0 developer relations team. I am the mobile and IoT specialist. So most of my demonstrations are on for mobile and IoT platforms. And a lot of it's being done for Android because it is the most widely used mobile platform in the world. And what I'm showing here is just a tiny slice of a larger app. And what I'm highlighting here is the login method that you have to write. It is fairly straightforward once you get a closer look at it. And basically what I've done is I have already imported the Auth0 authentication library, and it provides me with a class called web auth provider. And from there, I can handle things like login and log out. Login is very straightforward. Basically, once I have been provided with an account object, I can basically start saying, look, I want to log somebody into a mobile app. And I want to provide this set of permissions. Scope basically defines what the sort of access that uh, the Auth0 system has, including things like I should be able to access the user's profile so I can find out things like their name and email addresses. And I specify after that, which uh, Auth0 tenant I need to be able to connect to. And then finally, I, I define here, I'm basically defining a couple of methods that say what happens if the user successfully logs in, or in other words, provides a recognized username and password combination, or what happens if they fail to log, in which case either their username or password or both are not some kind of recognized combination. It's straightforward as well. And once I do that, once the user's logged in, I can do things like get their profile information, which is basic identity information about a user. Usually it's things like names and basic contact information, including email. And I can also read and write uh, user metadata related to the user who just logged in, which allows me to do things like keep track of where they were in the application. Have they activated certain features or do they have certain preferences? One of the nice things about that is I can connect that with the user. I can connect metadata related to the user about the user without having to store it in my own database. I can store it within their account attached to their identity within the Auth0 system. It's pretty handy. Once again, the idea is that we're trying to take care of all the authentication and authorization stuff within our own system that you can just simply add to your application so that you don't have to worry about that. So you can concentrate on what you're really trying to do, which is build an application to solve the particular problem that you're coding for. How quickly can somebody implement this as a service? I would say, you know what, after you've read the quick start, because Auth0 does have a whole bunch of quick start projects that support different programming languages and different frameworks. I, I put it in the five to 10 minute range, especially if you do start wow. with a quick start, because what happens is when you log into the Auth0 system and download a quick start, the application that you download already has your particular account's credentials included in it. So you're actually downloading a working, if not mostly working application where you have to fill in a couple of blanks. So the idea is that basically, yeah, you should be able to go from zero 
to awesome in about 15 minutes at the very outside. And that is if you like to read all the documentation very carefully. And those developers are few and far between. We love to dive in and go, ah, documentation, we can read it later. So that not only does it cut out the time, but it makes everything so much more secure and uh, just easy to use. It's a great service. Yes. And the other thing, of course, is that it takes care of a whole bunch of other things for you that you'd probably have to worry about in the end. For instance, there's the matter of what if your users want to log in using their credentials from another provider, perhaps their Facebook account, which is very popular. Mm. There are a lot of systems uh, where you're logging in using Facebook. I think uh, the one I use most of the time is Canva, for instance. I don't have a Canva password I, or user ID. I'm logging in through Facebook. You can basically, with a couple of settings that you set within your Auth0 tenants control panel, you can do that. You can enable Facebook login or Google login or sign in with Apple or Microsoft without having to implement that yourself. We've taken care of that. We've talked to the providers and we've done the security homework as well. Wow, that's amazing. Joey, thank you so much for providing us with context about this. And I can't see how anybody wouldn't want to implement this going forward if they want some kind of solution for authentication and authorization, rather than going through the headache of going into the woods and chopping down their own tree and making their own door, as you said. Yeah, as a developer, you're already doing a lot. In fact, you're probably yeah. these days, uh, you're already being asked, to do too much already. Do what you can to lighten your load so you can do what you do best. Well said. Thank you for providing all that context. And I really appreciate you joining us on the show today. And Joey, I know you said you got your position somehow from being involved with an accordion. In your information on LinkedIn, I noticed it says that you are Tampa Bay's number one tech blogger and rock and roll accordionist. It would be a disservice if you didn't provide a little bit of accordion here at the end. Okay, let's see. Why don't I play the song that I actually played when I jumped in front of those news cameras at uh, Linux World Expo? Thank you so much. That would be excellent. Okay. <laughs> Darling, you got to let me know. Should I sleep or should I code? If I sleep, I'll miss the milestone. And if I code, I'll break my head bone. So come on and let me know. Should I sleep or should I code? <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yes, that's excellent. Joey, thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate it. And excellent performance. Amazing as always. Thank you so much. Joey Davila, everybody. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everybody.